Arizona Cardinals fans out there, to the extent there are any, and I'm learning there are some, they get very mad. They think I have a vendetta for some reason against their team. Quit picking on our team. Look, if your team quits doing dumb stuff, I'll quit talking about the dumb stuff your team is doing. The latest, which the NFL tried to hide from everyone by dropping it five minutes before the start of the draft, the tampering case involving Jonathan Gannon, the phone call made by GM Monty Austin for to Gannon to make it clear to Gannon he was on the radar screen at a time when he should have been fully focused on preparing for the Super Bowl. As far as Gannon knew, he wasn't leaving. He could go all in. He could be undistracted by the possibility, the reality of interviewing for a head coaching job the day after the Super Bowl. And surely he spent time, he spent effort, he devoted thought that week to the interview to come because it was good enough to get him the job. Peter, I thought of you the other day when Chris Sims and I were talking about it and Sims made the great point that this goes back to something that you've been talking about. You've got me on board. Others around the league believe it. There should be no hiring process for any team in any shape or form until after the Super Bowl has ended. Delay it all until then to avoid these situations where there is a very real distraction. That's the bottom line here. That's why the Eagles are upset. That's why this all happened. And I think one of the reasons why it's been kept quiet, if the league allowed all the facts to come out, I think a lot of people would be screaming in unison the same point you've been making for years now. Why are we doing this at a time when the process itself undermines the integrity of the preparation in which that coach is engaging for the games that his team still must play. Mike, I think everything you needed to know about how insane the NFL's hiring process is for head coaches after a season is this. Do you remember after Dallas wins the wild card game uh, on Monday night over Tampa and then they have to get prepared to go play the 49ers. And that week, Dan Quinn, the defensive coordinator of the 49ers, or of the Dallas Cowboys, excuse me. And, and I'm going to say this with, and because I have great admiration for Dan Quinn. This is not his fault. But Dan Quinn in that week had the option, if he chose, I think some he took, You'd probably have a better memory of this. But I think he interviewed for two jobs during that week, right? Re refresh my memory on that, Mike. Um, but Dan Quinn basically had a short week to prepare for a quarterback that he had never faced before. Uh, and, you know, so you could say whatever you want about Brock Purdy. But essentially, Dan Quinn played a Monday night game in Tampa and landed back in Dallas probably at four o'clock in the morning on Tuesday. They're going to play a football game on Sunday, halfway across the country the other way in San Francisco. Okay, so they're probably leaving either very early Saturday morning out of Dallas or Friday night. I don't know what their travel thing was. But my point is that is the most important week of the year for the Dallas Cowboys. Most important, far and away. You know, it's the divisional route. It's getting the Cowboys to the... To, to, they're playing to get to the NFC Championship game for the first time since Jerry Jones was four years old. And, and so what happens? Dan Quinn has the option to do all these interviews for jobs. And it's crazy. Who would take, and I don't care what anybody says, oh, well, he got the game plan in. He did everything he needed to do. He did this in his spare time. You know what? In his spare time, Dan Quinn should be napping. That's what he should be doing. He should be keeping fresh for the biggest game of the year. Or he should be doing extra work on Brock Purdy. I don't know. It is crazy that the NFL in a short week game for the Dallas Cowboys, you know, basically that their system is set up so that coaches on that, free, on that team can interview for jobs. Who in the world thinks this is a good idea? Colts, Cardinals, and Broncos are the three teams 
with which Dan Quinn interviewed that short week between the Monday night game Jesus. against the Buccaneers and the Sunday game against Insanity. the 49ers. It's and look, and, and folks, it's not a normal job interview. You go in there with a plan. You go in there with a binder. You go in there with a list of people you've spoken to that you believe you'll be able to hire to be on your staff. Well, how do you get yeah. to the point where you're confident that those folks will say yes? You spend extra time on top of preparing for the interview on the phone with these individuals that you are going to be bringing to your next job if you get a head coaching job. So it is a huge distraction as it relates to your available time, as it relates to your available thought. I remember when I was practicing law, Peter, and if I was in trial the week before and the week of, it was all I ever thought about. Nothing else. In the shower, in the car, laying in bed, anywhere I was, if I wasn't actually working, when I was eating, I would sit there and stare off into space like David Putty, thinking about the case, not even looking at the newspaper. <laughs> You're completely and totally focused and obsessed because this is it. This is the moment. This is what it's all leading up to. So whether it's three interviews on a short week or, and again, I, I firmly believe, Peter, that there's something about the Gannon case, how the Eagles became aware of it, how much time he spent it, in that two-week window getting ready for his interview, how detailed his outline was, maybe created on his work computer that they found after he left, I don't know. But something – This I, I reject the position that this is something that the Cardinals self-reported out of some crisis of conscience because everybody tampers. I think the Eagles found something that got them ridiculously pissed off. The crap hit the fan, and the NFL made it go away quietly because if we knew the extent to which Jonathan Gannon was distracted in his preparation for Super Bowl 57, we would be outraged, Eagles fans particularly, that his eye was off the prize as he focused on getting ready for his interview with the Cardinals. That's the only way to explain why they hit it into the five-minute window before the draft. That's the ultimate place to tuck bad news. We're all focused on the draft. You're in Las Vegas in the draft room. I'm locked in, ready to go. It was five till eight when this announcement was made. It's ridiculous when you think about it. It was done for one reason, to get guys like you and me to not notice it and not talk about it. Well, here's the thing, NFL. When you do something like that, we're not dumb. You're just going to piss us off and make us think there's reason to chase it. There's something you're hiding, and we're going to find it. And hopefully when we do, Peter, it blows this whole thing up, and we get the thing you've been lobbying for for years. All of this gets pushed you until know what? after the Super Bowl. I'll tell you what, to me, what is, what's really interesting about that is, so, Mike, in every draft room, there's this little speaker with this tinny voice that comes through, and it says things like, uh, the Raiders selection is in, the Atlanta Falcons are on the clock. And then a few seconds later on a board over in the corner, there is, uh, you know, the pick is made. And so, uh, and all that is controlled at Draft Central in New York. So in this particular case, it did happen at about five minutes before the draft. And uh, th this tinny voice comes on and says, there's been a trade between the Arizona Cardinals and the Philadelphia Eagles. So I look up at the board and I see it and I say, this makes no sense at all. Why would the Eagles trade with the Arizona Cardinals right before the draft? And then two things happen. Uh, Dave Ziegler, the GM of the, of the Raiders, gets on his cell phone and he calls somebody. I don't think it was Howie Roseman. But he calls somebody in the Eagles and said, you guys just can't help yourself. You always got to be trading. You always, what, what's going on? <laughs> and, he li and he listens and he goes, oh, and he hangs up. And then, like almost simultaneously, <laughs> Adam Schefter tweets that this, is, this deal was the result of uh, the Cardinals and the Eagles over some tampering charges involving the hiring of Jonathan Gannon, the former Philadelphia defensive coordinator hired as the Cardinals head coach. So clearly it was all about the Cardinals talking to Gannon 
outside of the regular normal windows. But I'll just say one other thing. So at the time, I didn't really think about it. And when I went home, when I went back to my hotel that night, when I, one of the things I love to do after every draft is I love to look at all the trades to say what happened. So the first trade in the trade order was that one. And I said, holy crap. The Arizona Cardinals traded down 28 spots. That is uh, on day two of the draft. That is a big penalty for this. And they they got a a late pick, like a, a fourth or a fifth. I forget what it is. But I said, that is a tremendous penalty when you think about it. If you're trading down... 28 spots on day two of the draft. So I guess I look at this, Mike, and I say, this is probably bigger than we thought. And uh, I hope it does come out what exactly happened. We're going to take a break, but a lot of people around the league confused and some upset that the two teams settled this, that the league never made a statement about it that the league never imposed punishment when it was a clear, blatant violation that the Cardinals admitted to. There's a lot more to this story that the Eagles know, the Cardinals know, the league knows, and none of them are going to voluntarily tell us for the reasons I think we've already articulated. It could blow up the whole hiring cycle if we all knew the truth. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.